So we're looking quickly at the uh, Photoshop uh, release 26. Uh, this is October 2024, and uh, we're looking at the kind of things that have come from beta into the work in Photoshop now to actually allow us to do some things. Um, I just want to concentrate on uh, what I feel are the main uh, things within this kind of uh, update, if that's the right word, and so on with it. But especially on the AI, things have really, really matured. Um, number one, we're going to be looking at removing people e easily from within this kind of background here, uh, as well as obviously trying to use the contextual toolbar uh, a lot quicker and everything else with it and things really. So there's going to be some things that take a little bit of time to do with the AI doing its job. Uh, but uh, I'll kind of jump through that, so at least I won't waste waste your time so you can see exactly what I'm doing first. So with that in mind, let's get going. Um, and if we launch the uh, original RAW uh, file, there are some new things in RAW, one of them being the Adobe Adaptive Beta. It is in Beta, though, here, but it is in the new RAW. Uh, if we just open that up to begin with, we open it straight into uh, Photoshop, and... Um, Things like straighten, extend, kind of uh, um, generative fill and everything else with it is obviously something that we want to do. So if we just go into crop to begin with, and then we kind of have straightened it, moved it out towards the side, kind of even filling in more than that's actually there, you know we can click on this now with generative expand. So we can do that without any issues at all. Photoshop just needs to do the AI and basically do its job. That's going to do a pretty good job straight away. It's not what I would say is the main feature today. The quality of the AI, without a doubt, has improved. But if we were to look up the top here, this is absolutely fake. This wall does not end like that <laughs> and so on. But it's, it's doing a job. One of the key things is the updated remove tool. So if we click on to J or into the remove tool um, and highlighting that. If we kind of see the top here, we've got some options. Just a heads up, if you've done what I've done there with the generative uh, expand, um, this is not going to allow you to kind of really work. Can you see the no entry sign on the actual uh, image here? Yeah. So the first thing I need to do is make a new image based on all visible layers. So control, uh, shift control, alt E. And now I'm on that, basically, as you can see, the um, remove tool is back to itself. However, what we really want to do is look for the options here. So in other words, we want people. There is a thing kind of wiring ca uh, cables as well. But this image, I promise you, is really impressive. If it works as good as it's done twice before now, uh, we're going to go into the find uh, distractions, and then we're going to click on people. Notice that there's also another box here on the side, which is mode, which is generative AI, AI on, generative AI off, and then obviously the auto. We're going to stay on auto for now. Let me click on people. Um, once uh, Photoshop analyzes the image, it's looking for people that are distractions, not main content of your image. And you can see already what it's done here. It's found them over to this side, which is great. That's done its job. So now all I need to do is click the yes, kind of now get rid of them for me. And the remove tool is going to go into its function of, guess what, getting rid of them. The reason I chose this, this is a shot that I did in Bath over the weekend. And um, Bath, U, uh, the UK rather, in the Bath. Um, but it's the way the cobblestones are replaced. It is quite fantastic, in fact. Whether it's just by luck that the image that I kind of shot and chose has enough information for the AI to work, but it really does do a great job, at least the twice before I've done it, including Photoshop School today. This last part you're going to find, it's hanging, okay? It's because there's a lot of work going on here. The AI is really doing its job and it's really trying to actually fill in a much more higher quality AI. And I'll, sh I give, I'll give you an example of that now in a minute. But it is analyzing this whole image, and they are going to be replaced. 
What I also did uh, when I did this in Photoshop School today, I did highlight that little bit of a white flag in the background, and I highlighted these kind of canopies here to get rid of those. Um, but besides for that, it really uh, has or will do a pretty good job. And I think that's because of the amount of cobbles, the flagstones that are actually kind of visible. So, wow, eh? Um, that just took about another... 15 sec seconds that I've just trimmed out for you so you didn't have to hang around and watch it but that's done an amazing job um, look at all the flagstones and so on with it uh, previous time that I've done it it's put a person through the pillar here and so on with it I I'm not a fan of this fake kind of stage or whatever it is and obviously in this case instead of using the fine distractions this is where you can go in and paint the different areas. Now, I'm literally just painting on it um, and telling it those are the distractions to get rid of, please. Um, if you've um, got the remove after each uh, stroke is concerned, each time I kind of unclick the mouse, then basically it would have actually tried to fill it in. I uncheckered the little box at the top here, and that obviously kind of uh, allowed me to select the different areas within the image trying to get that fixed once more though remember we're working in a much higher quality of ai within the photoshop itself rather than the beta than we've experienced before and even though that hasn't kind of fixed it straight away um, i'm absolutely sure that if we went around it um, two or three more times the ai would be able to actually kind of fix that but it's just taking that little bit of time but if we just go back to the original and you see what it did already, that pretty much is a very impressive quality. And the quality of the AI generation is really what we're looking at. Let me give you an example. And I did use this in Photoshop School today, but if I kind of click on this boudoir image here, it still contains... Um, some original AI through um, the previous version of Photoshop. I can tell you now, Photoshop still hates anything with a lot of skin, like boudoir photography, okay? So we're going to be working in the background. I'm not necessarily interested in the girl today. We're interested in the background here. Now, remember, when we kind of select onto this image, you've got the previous kind of... Um, uh, images that it created. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to copy this bit of text at the top here, okay, so I don't have to retype it. And if you want to, you can go ahead and regenerate it. So there's a couple of things to pay notice to. Um, obviously, now you can uh, generate similar, but the main thing is you can uh, upgrade that quality so it enhance the detail. This is what Photoshop allows itself to kind of create a, an almost preview and then actually get a little bit be better. Now, you can see without any kind of, you know, smart filters on that, let me just kind of switch that off. It's, it's a pretty good quality anyway here. And if we regenerate the quality, it will kind of give us a, a really kind of good effect. So e even though it's there, it just feels a little bit fake as such. If I just um, create a new uh, background for a minute, so a new layer, and I just do Control A, and in this case, in the generative fill, remember I did the uh, Control A to select the canvas to make the contextual toolbar live. So if I go into Control V now, and I hit the generate, um, Photoshop is going to do its job. It's going to kind of compose things together. So lav lavish bathroom in whites and golds, uh, including a bath and windows, whatever it is. But you can see here straight away that already the quality is better than we had before. So this is what we had. It looks good at a distance. You come in closer. It's definitely not as good. Whereas we switch the new one on and we've got a lot more enhanced detail there. And then, obviously, once you choose your kind of image, which one should we do? We'll kind of choose that one, I think, with a window. We'll just do the um, enhance the detail. And Photoshop now will kind of upgrade the quality, upgrade the actual um, picture, pixels, and so on with it. If you're making a selection within an image, 
uh, within Photoshop, just like you were with Generative Fill before. Um, whereas it was ba basing itself on kind of a thousand pixels square, as it were. Um, now, if it's uh, an overall image like we are here, the quality is much higher. So it's definitely going to be using the AI. If I was just fixing stuff in the likes of an image and I was using um, a selection within the photograph, if it was less than a thousand pixels, um, then it would basically probably use gener uh, 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 generate kind of uh, fill from the areas within the image. So content aware, in other words, but this is creating it from fresh. But as I was saying to you, the whole point of this though, of course, now is the uh, uh, quality enhancement that we saw in the beta before. Um, if you're, so we can just see here now how it's uh, created the better ver version. If we look at the tap there, and we look at here, it's just a much better kind of cleaner version within it and things. So we've still got the issue um, as far as we can't guarantee a duplicate of something from scratch each time, but that's just life. Um, and we just go from there. So as far as the, the rest of the image is concerned, you can kind of still switch it on and off, but I promise you it still doesn't like skin. If I was to um, create a flattened image of this, shift control alt E, move this to the top as it were. And then I select uh, or remove the back uh, the background. If we select the subject first, and then we go to select and inverse, and we do the same generative fill, it's going to throw a kind of a wobbly because it's going to see so, so much skin. And there are times that you kind of beat it. Um, but look, it usually comes up with the guidelines is a prob a prob problem and so on with it. But like I was showing to you, if we switched her off and we were working from just a, a blank uh, product, we can do whatever we want in the background with it. So for me, as far as the new um, Photoshop update is concerned, uh, that's absolutely kind of key what we're doing. Uh, if we went to uh, another image for in instance, where we kind of select our subject here, let's uh, remove the background. So that's gonna select around the guy. Then we generate a background. We, we haven't been able to do that instantly before. And then it's just go cafe by a uh, beach. And then obviously it's going to do its job, but obviously you might need to kind of really go in and just um, uh, kind of check your mask and everything else before you actually go to the whole thing with it. But we're working it in a much bigger and better quality of image than I've seen going through Photoshop before. You know, I've been really critical, except when we're working in the beta um, but unless you're working in the beta all the time, then then what's the point kind of thing? So there's updates in Lightroom, there's updates in Bridge and Camera Raw. Uh, there's obviously the updates in the likes of um, uh, Photoshop. Um, if you want to see what's new, remember just coming up into the help and clicking onto the what's new. It'll kind of give uh, give you the options here. So distractions, that's what we just covered as far as those people were concerned. But remember, there's also wires uh, there. Generative fill is is much better than it was. Generative expand, we did that as well. Uh, generate sim similar is obviously kind of clicking to the right hand side where you can kind of uh, create um, another background based on what it already did. And then obviously the generating of the background as such really. But uh, yeah, um, for a change, thumbs up from Mark.